Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Time Division by Heidelbar Games. This is a two-player game that takes 20 to 60 minutes, depending on how many eras you're going to play, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game, Time Division, you're going to be playing as one of two competing time agencies. At some point in the multiverse, split off into two sections, and there are now two timelines. And each timeline has their own time agency, attempting to make their timeline be the standout one. You're going to go through the 1980s, you'll go through ancient Egypt and the dark times, attempting to gain influence for your agency and thusly gain victory points over each era. You can play one era and whoever wins that era wins, or you can play up the three eras in a row and whoever has the most influence by the end of each era, totaling a total number of points more than your opponent, will be the winner in that way. Go through drafting cards, placing cards, and doing an I pick you choose type situation as you go through each era to find out who is the victor in Time Division. Let's talk about the game and how to set it up, how to play in my review. To set up the game Time Division, the first thing you do is you take the main game board out and place it between both players. One player will play on the gold side, the lions, the other player will say, play on the black side, the wolves. Then you're going to go ahead and construct the platforms. There'll be a black and gold that you'll construct and you'll place them on the location on the board which represents where you're going to be placing your cards. You don't have to use these but why not? It comes in the game. Take the coin and flip the coin determine who is going to be the starting player for the offering, and then also take the victory point marker and craft this into a little globe and place it on the bottom of the board in the white space. From there, you need to decide, are you going to be playing each of the three eras in order, or are you going to just play one era of your choice? In this case, I'll explain how to play an era, because that explains the entire game. You are going to take the deck, and I suggest your first deck is always blue, and then orange, and then pink, and determine if you want to play with time travelers in your game. If you do, you'll shuffle these up randomly and give one to each player. From there, you're going to shuffle the deck up. Once you have shuffled the deck up, you're then going to deal cards onto the spaces with the circle on the game board so that each of the different spaces has an equal number of cards, in which case there should be nine cards represented in each of the two areas. After you have done that, you should have your board ready and each player should have an equal number of cards in a stack next to them for their side of the board as well as one time traveler and you can begin the game. Understanding how to play the game Time Division is actually quite simple. The complexity is in how you make your choices. To start the game, you're going to be doing a draft of sorts. Each player at the same time, simultaneously, will be drawing three cards from their side of their deck. And so in my instance, if I am playing as the gold lions, I will draw three cards from my gold side of the circle area. I'll choose one of these cards to keep, one will go over here to the far side board on this space, and then the other card will be given to my opponent. And the same thing will be said for your opponent. They will draw three cards from their side, they will choose a card, they will give you a card, and they will put a card. And you will continue doing this. So now once again, both players will draw three cards, assigning them to one of the three different areas each. Until eventually, each of the players has a hand of cards, they have a number of cards in this space here, and their opponent has a number of cards. So I have now got my two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. One of them being the Time Traveler, because I'm choosing to play with a Time Traveler variant. Um, so now that each player has their seven cards in hand, and there's going to be, um, I think, six cards in the a discard pile, yes, then you are ready, ready to begin. So the draft is done. Now you're just simply going to do the offering. And you flip the coin and determine who's going to start. Once you uh, know who's going to start, you're going to have that, uh, that player place a card down from their hand and place it down uh, onto their offering space. So place it face up. So the gold player is going first. They place their card on the gold space as they're offering face up. They're placing a scribe that has a value of six. The bottom of the card will tell you what that ability does. The next player now, the second player going second, is going to select their card and they can select any card they want and place it on the board here. They will check their number and in this case the shipbuilder is a seven. So when you check the numbers, whoever has the higher number is going to actually take the coin. You will flip the coin if needed and place it on the player who now controls the highest valued card. That player is going to make the decision. The decision is simple. You can either choose to A, do your ability and give your opponent influence equal to the number on the top left of their card, or you can do your opponent's ability, and let, or you can let your opponent do their ability, and you can take your card and gain it as victory points. And that's literally all you have to decide. Whoever has the decision based on the higher number will determine. I'm gonna use my ability, 
and you can have the card, or you can use your ability and I will have my card. The reason why you do this is for, for, for two reasons. A, maybe you want to activate the ability, they all do different things, they benefit you in different ways. Or B, you want the influence, because at the end of the game, or at the end of this round here, when the era is over, you will check to see your influence area and you'll calculate all the value that you have there. And whoever has the most value in that area is going to score two points. Additionally, the time travelers are a bonus. These time traveler guys here, if you happen to have one in your influence, even though they're only worth two points as far as your influence is concerned, they're actually gonna give you an extra victory point. So you can gain a total of four points in one single round. Once you have selected to do one of the abilities and your opponent goes ahead and takes, uh, takes theirs or takes their card, the card whose ever ability has been used will go to uh, the discard pile. You'll take this and you'll place it into the discard pile, which is on the far opposite side of the victory point area. And from there, whoever has the coin is going to be the first person to select one of their cards in the offering and place it face up. And then the next player is going to then determine their card. The player played a three potter, and then I go ahead and play my four carpenter. Four is bigger than three. I now have control. So now I can choose to either A, do my ability and give my opponent their card, or B, I can have my opponent do their ability and I can take my card. And that is how the game will go. And eventually the game is gonna look something like this, where you'll have a number of cards uh, on your influence tracker. You'll have a number of cards that have been discarded here and you might have cards that go back into this area here. Now there are multiple different areas in the game. Um, so some of them are basically time locked. Others are like a, a, a graveyard of sorts that you only have in play once you start playing card abilities. And then you have this little space here, which is a secondary type of a graveyard where you can pull cards out. Really each of the cards and their abilities explains how they work. And how the cards work is, is Pretty simple, I suppose, but you'll have this wonderful little effect sheet that explains. So even if you don't know, you can go, okay, what is this little target symbol? Well, it means the independent stack. Well, which stack is that? Well, it's not this discard area, so it must be my secondary. So it is this stack here. So the player, which is blue, which is always you, is going to look through this independent stack, and then they can trigger one ability of one card in that stack. And you can always look and see what each of the cards do. So if I chose that, I would give my opponent, let's say that I had a four and a two, here, I choose to do my Stone Mason ability, I would give my opponent the Time Traveler 2, which gives them a victory point, but I get to look into this stack here, find a card that I want to activate its ability, and then I can place it and do the ability. And that will help me how every single card functions. They're all unique and they're all different in what they do. Some of them will dig the discard piles. Other times cards might go into a specific area that waits for a round until you initiate a new ability. And each era also has their own unique effects and abilities that trigger in different ways. So as you go from one area era to the next, they will have unique twists and turns that are kind of featured in them that function differently, which is kind of a nice little, uh, little additive bonus. At the end of each era, you just check to see, right? Okay, I have the most points, I'm gonna score two. Oh, you have a time traveler, you'll get one, but I also have a time traveler, so I will get one. Then you clear off the entire board, including all of the cards in all of the different areas, and remove them completely. And then you will take the next deck of cards and you will do the same thing. You will deal out one time traveler to each player. You will give a stack of nine on each side here and you'll do a draft and then you will do the placement. Uh, when it comes to the coin here, uh, the coin is gonna be left to the player who has the most victory points at the end of an era. If there's a tie, simply leave it where it stands. Okay, that's how you play the game Time Division. Let's talk about it. So I got a chunk of Heidelberg games recently, and this one of all of them is definitely the most meaty as far as strategic choices you're going to make. In fact, one of the eras is definitely extra challenging for me. Basically learning these cards is imperative as you play the game. The game itself, however, is simple. You're going to be doing a draft. Draw three, give one, keep one, and put one over here in the discard. Or so I call it the secondary discard. Technically, if you want to get specific on it, you can look at the symbol and it'll tell you, okay, that's the independent stack, and over here is called the past. So the past, independent stack, discard one, discard two. You're going to use your own terminology, I suppose. But either way, uh, this game is basically a drafting game and then an I pick you choose. But the I pick you choose is kind of a little different. It's going to be based on what numbers are placed on the offering here, who has the higher value, and that player then determines what ability gets used by which player and who gets to keep the value of, of, of influence that gets placed on their side here. Now, just because you gain something, just because you have a higher number, doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get the best choice. In fact, 
Sometimes playing a low card when somebody has a high card and giving them a terrible, terrible choice can be exactly what you want to do. There are certain combinations of cards that will never ever present your opponent with a great choice. And the same is said for you as well. It's a really interesting game mechanic that I really, really enjoy. I like the idea of having cards in my hand, seeing what they play, and then determining, do I want to give them the choice? Do I want the choice? And sometimes it might be in my benefit to take the choice and suffer a little bit of a loss or gain a bit of, a bit of a benefit. And other times I might be like, you know what? You can have this choice. Neither seem great to me. Hopefully you choose the one that's gonna benefit me more. And it's really, really enjoyable. The draft is light, it's fun, it's simple, and like where you place the cards and how they get put into this pile here is gonna make a difference because cards trigger in different ways. Some cards are gonna let you pull from the past and put them in your influence or trigger cards in your past or trigger cards in the independent stack. Other times, you might be able to remove cards from your opponent's offering or maybe in some really nice cases and they're very niche, you might be able to discard the card you played and take your opponent's card and put it into your influence. And so because of that, the draft is definitely one of the most important phases as to what cards you have, because if you have bad cards and your opponent has all the good cards, even with choices being said, you might end up losing. So you have to make sure you draft well. But the I pick you choose mechanic is super, super fun. It feels good to make tough choices. And this game presents you with a ton of tough choices. Each of the eras is different. The first era is pretty simple. You look at the card, the card will tell you an area, which player, what, what you're gonna do next, and uh, where it's gonna be done next. And this one's pretty simple, right? You'll look and say, okay, this one here, and you can always look at the effects here. It's influence area of this player, the, the, your opponent. And then you are gonna take a card from your, in, your opponent's influence area, and then you're gonna place it into the past. So that means that this card is going to let you discard one of your opponent's influence cards. Ooh, super powerful, right? Um, but when you get to the next era, it presents you with new challenges. There might be additional effects to take place where you do something and your opponent does something, or it might be something even more complex where now you focus on the amount of influence in players' areas. Whoever has the most influence can now take a card from their influence and swap it with another player's influence or, or lowest influence. Whoever has the most influence is gonna be able to take a card from the past and put it into their hand, et cetera, et cetera. So now you're trying to make choices based on influence uh, as opposed to like just trying to gain a specific effect from a specific area. And so these cards present definitely, definitely a unique complexity to them. And then the next one, the next era, this one here is the 1800s, I believe, or 1980s. Uh, this one actually is going to involve flipping cards. So whenever you get the ability of a specific card, you actually take that card, flip it on its opposite end and score it for influence. And each of these abilities will give you a benefit. This one here might say you'll get four points for each card that has been flipped on either side of influence, or it might say you're gonna increase this amount of influence by the card to its left and to its right. So if you have a one over here and a four over here, this card here is worth five points. And so it's a kind of a, an engine building type of a, a style of kind of how you want to build your influence up. Utilizing Time Travelers are great. Time Travelers are probably the best cards in the game. They can either give you victory points if you get them into influence or an extremely strong ability. So it might force your opponent to not want to let you have the card itself and let you gain the ability, but that ability might end up getting you even more points. It might give you more influence. You might find a Time Traveler in one of the other areas and place them into your control influence area. This is a really, really excellent game. It has tough choices. I like both the pink and uh, blue areas uh, eras better than I like the orange one. The orange one's a little bit more complex and they each have their own unique complexities to them. You do have to learn the cards. Your first gameplay through this is gonna be a challenging one. I actually played live the first time playing through this game and uh, I, I played Era one pretty well, and era three was I kind of understood pretty well as well. But the, the second one with how you kind of you choose influence and like make choices and where to place and what is the best choice, I made several errors where I'm like, okay, this does this, but then I didn't realize um, a certain portion of the card because I didn't look at every single a little portion of what it does. Like I have to look and make to live to look and make sure that the card does what you think it does because once you've placed and maybe your opponent's not as nice as my wife, they might make you keep that choice and suffer extreme consequences. But that is actually part of the game. That's a lot of fun of the game, trying to understand how the cards work, learning the cards, and then once you've gained a full grasp on them, it all comes down to really making those tough decisions. And this game 
is a game of tough decisions. It's a two player game. It only plays two players and it's head to head and it is a combative game. It's not a take that game necessarily, but it is a fight. It kind of reminds me of Master of Wills in the term of the victory points are gonna be going back and forth as like a tug of war aspect. And you're pushing your influence on your side and away from your opponent's side and scoring as much as you can through three eras as opposed to one big game of tug of war. This has three separate ones. I always suggest playing this game all three eras so that it gives the unique complexities of each era and allowing players to uh, do well in the ways they succeed and to practice in the ways that they don't as opposed to just singly, singularly playing one. There are some bonus components like these offerings. You don't need them. They're simply on the board already, but they look cool. So I suggest you place them down. And now let's talk about the quality. Excellent quality of the game. Nice, solid, thick, heavy metal coin. It's gonna have a, a nice little victory point marker. Little additive bonus of making the, the board look nicer. It's nice and thick. The cards work well. They are explained well, but you do have to look and understand them. This is gonna be a game that takes you one or two gameplays thoroughly through each of the eras to where you fully get a grasp of the cards. It's the one drawback of the game is these can be challenging to understand for your first or second gameplay. And if you don't mind that and you like an aggressive game, you like a game with unique twists for each of the different eras, and it also plays kind of samey each of the different eras once you kind of got a grasp of them. Now you have an idea. Now you need to know what to draft when to place and what is available to place when your opponent places certain things and make the best choices. There's always a better choice to make even if it's, not, if it's not necessarily a good choice for you. So making the best choice and a good choice are different. But if you like that kind of stuff, if you enjoy a game with lots of tough choices, and this is gonna be a solid one for you, this is one I'm gonna keep around for a while. I'm gonna actually show to my friend Josh, he might wanna steal this one from me because it's very aggressive and he likes these type of games. But if you're looking for something like this, Time Division is definitely one to check out. It's very unique. I've never played a game that's exactly like this one before with probably the most tough choices I've played in quite some time. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Time Division by Heidelbar Games. If you're interested, there is a link down below where you can go ahead and purchase the game. And as well, if you would like, if you do appreciate us enough, and maybe you've seen more than one or two of our videos in the past, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the subscribe button and you can see more games. We cover a lot of unique games you've probably never heard of before. Some AAA and some games that are kind of more independent publisher games and find some real gems out there that might just be great for you and your gaming group. And of course, our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook X, uh, YouTube, and Twitch. All four stream simultaneously, and you can come watch us play games just like this one. In fact, this is the game we last played last Sunday. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to creating a little bit of time division with you next time.